Hello, I'm Dan Ridsdale, Head of Technology at Edison, and today I'm joined by Roseanne Kincaid-Smith, COO of Northern Data Group. Northern Data Group are a diversified provider of AI and high-performance computing solutions with partnerships with key industry players such as NVIDIA, HPE, Supermicro, and so on. Roseanne, many thanks for joining me today. Uh, can you start by introducing Northern Data Group and its key components? Yeah, absolutely. So Northern Data Group is um, a leading provider of AI and high-performance computing solutions. Uh, we are Europe's largest independent cluster of NVIDIA hardware. We have over 20,000 H100 GPUs and an expanded estate with H200. We have a huge footprint across Europe and we have a European heart, having started in Frankfurt. And we are a global business with an extended footprint across the US. So focusing on the cloud business, you're building Europe's largest independent AI data hardware cluster. Can you discuss that and, and in particular, um, what does it mean by being independent and what are the benefits of that? Sure, we provide that infrastructure that we hold in our cloud business to a diversified range of customers and clients. Um, it is independently held, meaning that we offer that support and capacity across the globe, but from an independent European position. So it's the largest cluster, so we have well over 20,000 H100 GPUs. We're also adding to that tech estate through H200 GPUs, and we can offer those services to European and global clients with the managed services elements to help them drive forward their ideas. It's also underpinned by clean renewable energy, and so all of our locations are actually driven by that type of technology so that you don't need to think about the environment, we're already taking that out of your hands and then also creating that energy efficiency that we like to underscore in our business. And then because it's European located, it's also data sovereign. So we've got that real specialist knowledge to make sure that um, data is stored correctly. And in terms of your platform, can you discuss what it actually takes to, to build this platform? And we've obviously talked about the, the processes, but can you discuss all of the other infrastructure that needs yeah. to go around that in terms of connectivity, energy supply and so on. Yeah, I'm gra really glad that you asked that because I think there is this sort of concept that is proliferating in the industry at the moment around GPU farms and it sounds almost um, battery operated in many respects, but it all for us starts with the data center environment. These are tier three ready, tier three ready uh, hematically sealed environments which allow for the best possible environment for that hardware to run effectively. And then we also architect all of those servers together in a very specific rack configuration, which means that they have the best DPU Bluefield card, they are connected with Mellanox or InfiniBand, and then they have very, very high speed connectivity that comes into the data center and runs node to node in those supercomputers, which means that when you are training your model in our environment, you have easy access to that and the bare metal runs with absolute efficiency. And that, again, is super important when we're thinking about energy. So although we choose renewable energy sources and carbon neutrality, still optimizing that with the right configuration of hardware and things like direct-to-chip liquid cooling is super important for the long-term longevity of the environment, the data center environment, and the hardware, which means less disposals and keeping your footprint light. Can you talk about the energy supply as well? Yeah, I mean, so we, we choose our locations for our data centers in proximity to hydroelectricity as a preference. But we also look at um, energy sources like wind and solar amongst, um, amongst others. Um, and, and even just balanced grid supply is important for us. Um, optimizing the use of that and keeping the cost low and making sure that there is no expense on the environment is very much why we invest in things like direct-to-chip liquid cooling. Um, we've had a long legacy in the data center environment, and so that measured and managed approach that we take to energy conservation and the type of energy that we have invested in is a long-term thing for us, and we continue to do that in the future. And it's more than just pure hardware. Can you talk about the software um, side of the business? Yeah, so we have two elements to that. Uh, one is our unique proprietary portal, which helps customers to access the hardware in a very easy way and to see where the performance of the GPU is at. 
that means that you can effectively shut things up and down as what you need to to get the optimized training route for yourself. The second part that we offer is essentially intelligence as a service is what I like to call it and that is the provision of an AI ecosystem backed by NVIDIA which allows multiple API tools to again help to optimize data aggregation, data collection and how again you can make your tools effective and really ramp up the schedule of delivering your product and monetizing it. And then now turning towards the customer side and the demand side, you've already um, pre-sold a significant proportion of your capacity, which is obviously a, a positive indicator. Can you discuss um, what type of customers you're working with and, and also the types of use case that they are deploying your, your, your hardware to, to execute? Yeah, so we have big global AI players who shall not be named. Um, and then we have software companies that we work with, but we also, just to showcase some of the smaller customers who are doing really great things, we have a customer called Zane, uh, who runs a legal co-pilot. It's a European first, and that model has been training on our hardware. We have customers like Nua, which, opti uh, which are optical recognition based, and then we have other sort of co-pilots and similar sort of applications like ChatGPT in smaller versions of that. So it's a really expansive range of customers um, that we can use to showcase what generative AI can do in everyday scenarios. So specifically, um, what type of customers or what, why would a customer choose your infrastructure rather than that of one of the hyperscalers? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the true USPs that we offer, of course, is the way that we configure our hardware. So you do have a far more flexible and bespoke service that you get from us. So we love to partner with our customers to say, what do you need? How do we bring that to life? And we can build alongside you, which is obviously very differentiated from the product that you would find from a hyperscaler. And then there is the personal service aspect. But then in addition to that, again, the type of customer that we are looking for, ones that pride data sovereignty, ones that are, are driving true innovation, and ones who value the environment around them. And that is a very diversified opportunity from working with a hyperscaler. Now, there are benefits to working with a hyperscaler, of course, but we look for that customer that is ultimately going to drive really, really game-changing innovation and wants to work with a partner alongside them to bring that to life. Along those lines, you recently launched the Northern Data AI Accelerator, yeah. um, and, and that's in partnership with your partners, people like um, NVIDIA, Supermicro, HPE. Yeah. Can you discuss um, that and how you choose the companies that come into the accelerator? Yeah, and so along the sort of idea that we believe AI will bring great change to society, we also want to make sure it's not just a technology that is in the hands of the few. And the AI accelerator is aimed at allowing smaller, uh, smaller startups or in fact, any business that is along the curve are developing something that is going to be really game-changing in the AI ecosystem and allowing them access to use our hardware free of charge and alongside that also offering them mentorship from our own, from our own leadership at Northern Data but from our partners too, as, you, as we've mentioned. That includes enhancing their business strategies, helping them to monetize the product, advancing the product, mentorships, and then of course having access to things like the Deep Learning Institute at NVIDIA and mentorship from places like HPE and Supermicro, to name a few, will really help to drive innovators forward, even if they don't have the capital to invest in that very in-demand um, infrastructure. And looking at the business and looking at the evolution of Northern Data, can you just discuss the key milestones as you develop your strategy? What are the key milestones that investors should be looking for? We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. So as I said, We've got this huge cluster of H100 technology that is coming to market. By the end of this year, we will have fully deployed both the H100s, 20,000 of those GPUs, plus an additional H200, 2,000 GPUs. So we'll have that full estate to market alongside our developed services and the enhancements on our platform. But that's not stopping there. We were obviously announced as one of the key partners in the Blackwell Partnership, which is the new technology that NVIDIA is offering that is going to change the game yet again. And bringing that to market will again complement our overall ESG strategy. So our environments are purpose-built to support technology like Blackwell. 
So from the immediate investment on cutting edge technology today to providing solutions for the future, which will really change the game of generative AI again. And looking at the development of AI, um, it's, it's generally held that we are going through a period of disruptive innovation where, where you will see accelerated value creation, but also value destruction for people who aren't well exposed to, to the trend. Um, what are your views on that and how does that influence the way Northern data is run? I mean, I think it's quite an interesting one. I think there is a huge amount of scepticism around AI. There's a lot of uh, media talk, I guess, around whether or not the technology can be truly monetized. But ultimately, AI has been with us for quite some time in various different guises. You just need to look at your phone and ask for Siri to help you with something. These are algorithms already training and learning. The enhancements that the new generative AI will bring will ultimately change the way that we operate and live in society. It will optimize things and it can really expand and augment existing capabilities. So the idea that AI is not going to be revolutionary to the way that we live, I think is a small narrowing of the mind and rather we should be looking at where it can expand us. And I think the advancements we are already seeing in healthcare, in automation, um, and things like just chat GPT um, are an indicator of the fact that AI is really going to change things and optimise and bring more jobs, more potential, more possibility. And then moving back onto NVIDIA, you've, you, you've been announced as one of the partners for the Blackwell-based um, superchips and infrastructure. Um, and the performance benefits of those uh, of that infrastructure is quite you know, is, is, is impressive. It's seven to, I think, 30 times. They yeah. Say. How what should we how would should we would should we think about that in terms of the supply demand dynamic and how that influences your business? I mean, we've seen overwhelming demand for the H one hundreds and the H two hundreds, but what I'm actually really excited about with the GB two hundreds is the capacity for fine tuning of models for inferencing to make sure that that technology and as I said is really tr continuing to grow and bring change to the environment, but also. GB200s are not just more performant, they're also more energy efficient. And with the huge demand on both land and power, this is truly performant technology that will also help us to protect the environment. And that's one of the things that I find most exciting about that type. So just the advancement in technology, but also protecting the environment. Interesting. Razan, many thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Good. Good.